Good evening, and welcome to our service of Compline on this Friday, February 26th, TGIF. I'm David Lehman, Bishop of Caledonia, and I'm joined this evening by the Dean. Good evening. And we are on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Shimshan people, for which we are most grateful. Our worship this evening is found in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 722. We are on the eve of the commemoration of George Herbert, a early 17th century priest and poet. I am fond of saying that the church needs more poets, uh, especially in liturgy, to add to the language and to express that which we find hard to put into words. That's not me. I believe in rhyming couplets and the occasional limerick. Uh, there once was a bishop from Caledonia. I'll stop there because we're remembering George Herbert this evening. As we're in God's presence, let us pause, be still, and know that we're surrounded by God's grace, mercy, and love as we come into a time of worship. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm appointed for uh, this evening is Psalm, a portion of Psalm 42, found on page 383. Psalm 42, page 383. We shall say verses 1 through 7 together. Like as the heart desireth the water brooks, so longeth my soul after thee, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, yea, even for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night. While all day long they say unto me, Where now, thy God? These things I will remember as I pour out my soul within me, how I went with the multitude and brought them forth into the house of God, with a voice of praise and thanksgiving, a multitude keeping the holy day. Why art thou so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why art thou so disquieted within me? O put thy trust in God, for I will yet give them thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our reading this evening comes from the Gospel of John, beginning in the 21st chapter at the 15th verse. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue on page 723. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. We say together the Tilicus Antiterminum. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray, that with thy wanted favor thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes, from nightly fears and fantasize, tread underfoot our ghostly foe, 
that no pollution we may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost and thee doth live and reign eternally. Amen. Keep us as the apple of an eye. Hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. We say together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. In the language nearest to your hearts, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our ancestors. To be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven. To be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. Together let us say the confession. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will thou not turn again and quicken us? That thy people may rejoice in thee. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. And the collect for this, the eve of the commemoration of George Herbert. Heavenly Father, by the working of your love, you made your servant George Herbert to sing of your mercies and to stand as a priest and pastor at the table of the Paschal Lamb. Grant us to hear your call and to lay hold of the gifts you have given us. That we, may, uh, uh, that we also may come to share in the fellowship of your heavenly banquet. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech you, the Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, 
for this evening hour didst rest in the sepulchre, and didst thereby sanctify the grave to be a better hope to thy people. Make us so to abound in sorrow for our sins, which were the cause of thy passion, that when our bodies lie in their dust, our souls may live with thee, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may, rep may repose upon thy eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers and petitions this night for the people and places that are upon your hearts, inviting you to name them aloud or to share them in the comments box where we may all enter into prayer with you. We pray for all who are suffering from the coronavirus, for those who are in hospital, particularly in ICU beds, for those who are recovering at home, for those who are self-isolating awaiting test results, and for all who are excited about the news of two vaccines in the process and one being uh, uh, authorized here in Canada today and for the promise that they bring, the hope that they bring. We pray for all who are suffering this night from COVID and from all other diseases and ailments. Praying for those who are waiting for or recovering from surgeries, for those who are undergoing treatments, procedures, therapies, for those who are struggling with mental health conditions, for those battling anxiety, for those who are just frustrated with these days of restrictions, for those who have decided to go out against directives and now find themselves ill, for those who decide to exploit the weaknesses of others. We pray for those who have care for us, the doctors, the nurses, the researchers, for all who strive to bring healing and wholeness, that they may be strengthened, encouraged, and given extra compassion these days. We pray for those who lead us, for those in the communities, for those in the provincial and provi provincial and ter territorial leaderships, for those who lead us federally, for all who are continuing the work of evaluating and responding to the vaccines, for their distribution, and for, um, for all who are receiving them, praying for those nations around the world that won't be receiving them as quickly as Canada and for those who don't think it's coming fast enough. That the proper steps may be taken so that all will be safe and that all will feel secure in taking the vaccines when they are given an opportunity. We pray for those who lead the world. Oh, we pray for those who lead us. Yeah. Uh, federally, uh, and for those to lead us in the world. We pray for those countries where there is strife and discord, praying for Myanmar, for Yemen, for Syria, for the Iranian-sponsored uh, Iranian camps that were bombed today. For Russia. We pray for Nigeria and for the pain that the families of 300 plus girls who are taken hostage today and the deep emotional scars that will be brought upon them. And for the incredible hardness of heart and the willingness to do such an atrocious thing. To think that that is a just response or a fair response or a sane thing to do to take women, young girls, 
out of a school at gunpoint. We pray for true peace in the world, true understanding, and that everyone would live by the golden rule. We pray for those who lead, that they may be given understanding and a heart set for all people. We pray for those who lead us in the church, for Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Linda Nichols, our primate, for Mark McDowell, the National Indigenous Anglican Archbishop, for Melissa Skelton, our Metropolitan, and these her last days, and for her transition and uh, into new ministry, into retirement, um, and to the ministry she's called to in Olympia, diocese, not, not that other place, and for her husband as they um, settle into this new chapter together, for the Diocese of New Westminster and for John Stevens, their uh, diocesan bishop who will be seated on Sunday. For all who lead in the parishes, uh, both clergy and lay, and for their dedication to the mission and ministry of Christ in these days. We pray for, on Fridays, those who are grieving and my heart goes out to those families in Nigeria and for the anxiety and the grief that they're experiencing this, at this time. For, uh, the, for those who are grieving loss of loved ones from COVID and from other causes at this time. The inability to gather, to feast, to uh, have memorials, to do funerals in the traditional ways that we are accustomed to. For those who are grieving the loss of normalcy, security, employment, food security. For those who have a sense, uh, a loss of control. And for, and for those longing for the way life was pre-COVID. We pray for all those who are experiencing the dark night of the soul this night, that they may have a sense of God's presence, love in their life, and that God's arms surround them at this moment. With these prayers and with all whom you have named, we come before God and pray. Be mindful, Lord, of thy people gathered before thee. Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, collect the scattered, and bring the wandering to thy fold. Travel with the voyagers, defend the widows, shield the orphans, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Succor all who are in tribulation, necessity, anxiety, or distress. Remember for good all those that love us and those that hate us, and those that have desired us as worthy as we, unworthy as we are to pray for them. And those whom we have forgotten, do thou, O Lord, remember. For thou art the helper of the helpless, the savior of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. Thou who knowest each one's need has heard the prayers, Grant unto each according to thy merciful loving kindness and thy eternal love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And I invite your thanksgivings for this day, for those grace moments that you've experienced or seen in the lives of others. I am thankful for the work of the Council of the North and for the uh, meetings that today that we had to uh, discuss the spring meeting. And, and to look forward, uh, not just to the meetings this year, but down the road even further than that. Uh, it was nice to see people I hadn't seen in a while and, and to be able to connect across uh, the council and across Canada. And then it was nice to go for a walk and to encounter a good number of 
dogs that were very enthusiastic to see humans and want to see them and um, and to be out uh, enjoying what was a lovely afternoon here in Prince Rupert. And I'm thankful to be here with you tonight as we offer our prayers. O most merciful Father, we humbly thank thee for all thy gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for life and health and safety, for power to work and leisure to rest. For all that is beautiful in creation in the lives of men, women, and children, we praise and magnify thy holy name. But above all, we thank thee for our spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I should add, I'm so thankful for Bishop Lynn's enthusiasm earlier at night prayers uh, for her um, knowledge and insight into George Herbert and, um, and um, how infectious that is. We continue on page 727. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bless and preserve us this night and indeed forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening, and we pray that you have a most restful night. Tomorrow at 7 a.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. Mountain, Pastor Don from St. Mark's in Dawson Creek will lead us in morning prayer. At 12.15 Pacific, 1.15 Mountain, the Dean will be next door at the Cathedral for Midday Prayer. Then, God willing, I'll be back here tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Mountain for another service of Compline. Until then, rest well. Nighty-night. I'm a whole for